Well, hey, YouTube, uh, PD Two Finger back here in the living room playing around with this circuit. Uh, special thanks to Paul in the Lab. Paul in the Lab is an electronics blog, perhaps the greatest electronics blog on the internet. I certainly think it's a fact. Now, here we have a. Uh, this is three 18650 batteries. So let's. Uh, oh, I don't have a meter. Uh, how about that? So here we go. Um, I'm going to guess that's around 12.45 volts. I'm going to guess. 12.65. So this circuit is... The circuit is designed to run at 9 volts. Um, we we installed uh, 25 and 50 volt capacitors in it. It's the NE1 uh, Yamaha NE1 based preamp, which it's really it's a it's a parametric EQ. Now, the test rig consists of this first act Go amp, which is an LM386 with a alarm clock speaker, a two and a half inch speaker, and this operates at base frequency so we're gonna just be able to barely tell that it's working considering we're sending a sine wave uh, oscillator this is my test oscillator so here is the uh, this is a cable I made coming out of the test oscillator and I've soldered in a temporary wire just for the purpose of testing this circuit because we're gonna we're actually using shielded cable which looks like this co coaxial cable, more like a, an RCA type connector. Is that? So uh, I will remove this and then apply one of these later. But for the test to just quickly test it, I uh, this is ribbon cable from an old PC hard drive. That wire, it's thin wire. Uh, it's good to use in uh, for bunk applications. So we've got a shielded cable coming out of our tone generator. We'll turn that tone generator on. Here's the first. And it's humming. We'll shut our soldering iron off because that soldering iron creates a little bit of hum. And then I should, I should really. Hey, it, wouldn't that be embarrassing if all of this, I, I hooked it up and it didn't work? I'll tell you what, I lied. We already tested this and I, I was disassembling it and I thought, you know what? This would make a good video, how you test the circuit. I often will hook up a temp rig, temporary. Uh, I don't even use a guitar. I'll just use this oscillator. So... What we're going to do here is see, do the controls respond? Now I'm turning it clockwise or up, and it's it's getting more. So what that tells me is this is that 50K pot. That's our volume. And I'm guessing we're getting the clicks and pops because now there's a switch. The first test, I had no interference. So yeah, I'm, I'm switching the toggle switch. It's, it's performing. Oh, look at you can barely hear that. That must be flat mode. So yeah, there you go. Um, the circuit performs. What 
we can do is we'll we'll disconnect the 12 volts and we'll try the circuit at 9 because I've got a 9 volt battery but we'll see can you hear the difference I mean this is not really an optimal test because we're not sending a full range signal through it it's it's just a beep and then and then we have uh, the speaker which is kind of poopy as well but can you hear the difference Said was that louder? <laughs> yeah, it's not louder. We were both freaking out. So that's how I rig up a temporary test rig and more about building this contraption. This is going to be the power supply. We're, we're going to hope. That um, I mean, ideally, we would run the entire device off one battery pack. It's not always the case. And another thing, another factor would be, um, like typically when we make music, my wife uses three bass sounds. She uses a clean bass, she uses an overdriven distorted bass, and she uses an auto wah bass. This. Uh, preamp that we're making has a JFET buffer which just brings the signal up to a nice like it, it eliminates any type of signal loss that you would experience from having a long cable run a long guitar cable and then multiple connections in between each circuit each time you have a, something like that you lose a little bit of uh, frequency response or treble and signal it, it just goes down it's like putting in a tone control and a volume and turning them down to half so it's a significant all of a sudden when you plug your guitar straight in it sounds very crisp and clean and there's a lot of definition and then when you start connecting all this stuff it's like the effects are great but when you shut them off or bypass them then your your tone goes bye-bye and it's muffled sound so the JFET buffer is a real simple small circuit with a single transistor and that just kind of boosts the level up to what they call unity gain, which is not any louder or quieter than it should be, but a nice strong signal that's going to carry it through whatever it needs to be carried. Uh, secondary is the baseballs, that is the auto wah. Then we have the flatliner, which is the compressor, which we have yet to test. Then the distortion or overdrive, the dot 250, and then this final uh, NE1 Yamaha uh, parametric EQ. So ideally, we would have a single power supply for all of these. And typically, what you when you run into interference is having more than one effect circuit running off the same power supply. And that tends to happen, especially if you're in, 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 if you're utilizing two circuits that have a clock, meaning inside that circuit there is a quartz chip that's oscillating at a frequency. This is what you find with complicated circuits. Digital circuits have a clock, uh, and what we're talking about today, certainly none of these effects. I mean. The most complicated is the bass balls, which is a filter uh, that responds to your pick attack. It's a voltage controlled filter that uses a, is there a Vactrol in that circuit? Let's look, no, there isn't. There isn't. That, that circuit I didn't make. Pink Jimmy Photon sent me this pedal called the Corbulent Cojones. And we, de we, we didn't use it, and then we plugged it into the bass, and I was like, man, this is cool. And uh, I'm not going for pedals. I'm going for an all-in-one thing. So we removed it from the chassis, and we're building it into this all-in-one. And like I said, these circuits are simple enough. None of them are digital. There shouldn't be any reason 
why we can't power it off a single power pack. Now, if we do run into that, I could put another battery pack in. And then it'll be a little bit more complicated wiring. We need a double switch, a switch that has two switches inside of it to turn both battery packs on. That would be the thing. So it's very, it's a possi very uh, possible to do this. Uh, and we won't know until we hook it all up. So that's kind of the, it's going to be a, more than likely a test stage before I do this wire it all up to run off one thing uh, and just like cross my fingers and hope. I think it might be smart to do a test. So there may be a grand test that's going to be a pain in the neck to hook it up, but uh, worse than permanently wiring it really nice and, and well with heat shrink tubing and all that stuff and then having to tear that all apart. So look for a video on that test. I'm going to try to document more of this process. I didn't really shoot much in the past couple of days, but um, I do I do want to say one of the other possibilities is, like I, I had mentioned, her, my wife, uh, only using these three sounds on her, on her bass uh, rig. We've got multi-effects for her. She's got a little zoom. It's a square box that actually would fit on top of this perfectly. So I'm thinking, um, you know, ideally we eliminate that thing, but it's got cabinets and amps and all these different tones and hundred effects in it. So if we do want to use it, there's a, there's one possibility that I could put a secondary power pack that would have just two of these batteries, which would come out to be about eight, eight and a half volts. And that effector has a setting on it to run off nickel metal hydride batteries, which are not 1.5 volts, they're 1.2. And it's a setting in the bias that you can adjust. So it would be no problem. Uh, and what I'm getting at is then you'd have the unit on top of it, you slap down the multi-effector, and then I could make a little cable. We would have a separate battery pack living inside of this chassis that its sole purpose would be to ghost power the Zoom B B1. So we wouldn't have to be purchasing AA batteries, which is a thing that I go yay when that happens. Because it's, it's a trip to the dollar store and then you're throwing them out. And it's terrible for the environment. So uh, my thing is recycling these lithium ion batteries and going, you know, ordering the little uh, bu baskets from eBay, which are overpriced, waiting for months for them to arrive and then uh, wiring up stuff like this. So we'll see, uh, you know, you never know until you kind of take, like we won't know. And more than likely what we will do is we'll bring this unit out, but we'll also have the B2 as backup. And if all of a sudden we we kick on the, the whatever it is, this song that uses the auto wah, we don't like this auto wah, we're gonna need to use the other one. So more than likely how it'll work is this. To begin with, I will not build a battery pack inside of the unit. We'll use just this to power it. And then we'll go out and we'll run the zoom on top of the unit or next to it on AA batteries or an external power pack. I've got external uh, packs like this that just have a cardboard base hot glued onto them and you set them down because there's these metal tabs that are conductive. So I always uh, cover that. I, I, I cut out a piece of cardboard and I glue it. That's my way of doing that. Um, and I realize, yeah, that's not really safe. The cardboard wears out. But we we, keep, we pay attention to our stuff. And uh, we would take it out and try to run the... We need a name for this thing, this base brand. Uh, Gopti's All-in-One. S-G-A-L. Skull. The Seagal. Uh, we need a better name for that. But try it. And if we don't like it, well, we always have our old B1 to fall back on. And then we'll know, well, hey, put the battery pack inside the thing, and you could maybe bypass it, or I could maybe make some patches that we run the B1, and they, they kind of add a little bit of amp sim or what have you, character. All right, you guys. I'll see you soon, and of course, I always like to try to remember to say good thoughts, good words, good deeds. I hope you enjoy this type of comment. If you do, 
please leave a comment. I, I don't come on here and ask a lot of you guys. I hate that in videos where like, do you see that little bell? I need you to smash that like button. Hey guys, we're going to jump right into it. But first, I need you to just smash, like, come on, okay? Can, can we, like, just stop with the YouTube culture? All right, I'll see you soon. What I am asking you to do is, what was I asking him to do? Oh, comment if you like this type of stuff. Let me know if this is what you like. And then, then you know, I mean, if I have people encouraging me, then I'll know, hey, when, you, when you're uh, in this process, make a video. Because that turns into a whole thing, and I normally don't want to do that. I do a lot of this, and we don't film it. A lot. So if you enjoy this, let me know. Otherwise, I'm not going to take the time to do it. All right? Thank you so much, and peace.